well. Joining me now in the studio to talk more about ratings agencies and plans for financial reform, I'm joined by Ralph Silva, strategist at Silver Research Network. Thanks very much for coming to speak to us. So I just want to start by asking you about some of the comments we heard from Warren Buffett uh, there in his FCIC hearing. He was, is he right to say that ratings agencies like Moody's shouldn't be singled out for blame. Well, absolutely true. They didn't cause this problem, but they certainly didn't help the recovery of it. The, the real problem with the rating agencies is it's a 1950s business trying to serve a 2010 world. What happened over the past three years is that strategies for banking industries, uh, from the bank industry especially, has become a real-time endeavor. And Moody's takes three to six months to come up with the ratings. It's simply too slow to affect the financial markets, and that's the fundamental problem with the rating agencies right now. So what needs to happen then for there to be uh, more transparency, more accountability, what sort of changes in management and structure does there need to be? They need to take a couple of lessons from the broadcasting industry. Is when an analyst has an idea and has a suggestion, it has to get out to the people who need that suggestion much, much quicker. Quicker. And secondly, they got to stop taking money for people they're actually talking about. They're independents, although they continuously mm. say that they're independent. The truth is, they're going to favor the organizations that give money. It's just bottom line, and that also has to change. Well, this is the thing because there is a clear con conflict of interest because you had a situation where Wall Street firms, which were selling that we're actually paying the rating agencies to assign them credit ratings. That, that's right, and I know that the people who are actually doing the ratings will tell you that they're not influenced by it, but if you see customers walking around your halls all the time, of course you're going to talk more about them, and you want to make sure you keep getting paid at the end of the month, so you're going to say positive things about them. They have to be completely devoid of that, and that's why I think that the, the European mm. system probably is going to work better if it's funded by the government or the industry as one whole pool. That makes a lot more sense. So, looking ahead, you think the plans for... Uh, for there to be a rating agency right here in Europe or at least a, a mechanism to monitor, to regulate a rating agencies abroad is the right way forward? I think absolutely. We have to have strict regulations around it, very much like the stock exchanges have strict regulations. Mm. We have to have similar type of regulations for the rating agencies because when they actually put out a report, it moves the market. So you have to have that very well controlled. So do you think that investors will now look elsewhere for credit analysis and what does this mean for the position of the credit raters themselves? Will they have as much influence? How does this affect their competitive advantage, if you like? For the past three years, everybody's been looking elsewhere for credit ratings and for credit uh, information. And the truth is, is whenever they come out with a report, the influence is far less today than it was a mere three years ago. So yes, their business is considerably smaller, considerably less influential. The broadcasters, in fact, are the ones that have been taking up most of the, the, the difference. Investors are now looking at the broadcasters and what's coming out of the broad organizations such as Bloomberg and making decisions based on that information. And, and we have to regulate both areas. Okay, Ralph Silver, thanks very much.